Hello everyone and welcome to the Richmond Hill Camera Club Tips and Tricks for 2020. Now although at first glance you may think you know everything there is about tripods or camera supports, but hopefully I'll be able to provide you with a few tips and tricks on how to use this essential photographic tool to better advantage. And so tonight we're going to spend about 10 minutes talking about using tripods or camera supports why, what, and how. Now lighting conditions will often dictate that you must use a slower shutter speed in order to get the exposure you want. Hand holding at a slower shutter speed is going to result in a blurry picture. Using a tripod will allow the camera to remain stable without any shake and you can use a slower shutter speed and still get a sharp image. Long exposures such as water in motion, lines of the lights of nighttime traffic, or softening rough water to create creative images are only possible if you use a tripod. To create an HDR, we must take at least three photographs of different exposures, one for the highlights, one for the shadows, and one for the midtones, and then stitch them together to get a more idealized exposure and sometimes to create a more creative image. Again, this is only possible if all three images are aligned properly and that is done by using a tripod. Multiple exposures are used to make interesting creative images. When you use a tripod, the camera remains in the same place, allowing you to create the unusual images and then using Photoshop techniques to remove the unwanted elements. By taking a photo of the background, then multiple photos of the model suspended on a ladder or stool or chair, etc., you can then put the images together in Photoshop, and using layer masks, eliminate the ladder and the supported leg of the model is standing on to create a fantasy image. By having cameras set on the tripod during portrait photography, the attention can be paid to the model to direct her and activate the shutter when you achieve the look that you want. This is often done by using a shutter cable release. Supporting a long lens is essential to get a sharp image when you're doing animal photography. You can use a tripod, monopod, beanbag, as long as the lens remains steady and still. Remember to make sure the tripod is manufactured to support the weight of the camera and the lens that you're using. And if you're using a support on a vehicle, make sure that the vehicle is shut off so that you don't get any vibrations. For studio and product photography with elaborate setting up and lighting, the camera on the tripod allows fine tuning to create the ideal shot for your clients. And when shooting video, a tripod or other support is essential, as there's nothing worse than shaky video. Using a tripod that's designed with a pan head allows easy pans, shifts, and tilts in order to create that perfect video. When following a moving subject, stabilizing your video digital SLR with a gimbal like this Ronin S will allow you to create shake-free video while on the move. So what tripod should we use? There's all kinds of different tripods out on the market and you need to determine what tripod best suits your needs and your budget. This includes what you're shooting, where you're shooting, and of course you'll use a different tripod if you're shooting stills versus videos and you'll want a lighter tripod for traveling. The camera and the lens and the weight of the gear you'll be using will determine how beefy the supporting tripod must be to accommodate the weight. Using a tripod head, the part that screws onto the top of the tripod is the part that supports the camera and allows you to move the camera around. There's typically a plate that attaches to the camera and is screwed in, then there's a quick release mechanism that allows the camera to be attached and then removed quickly and easily. This one here is an Arca Swiss plate. Now these photos will show you that there are different kinds of tripod heads. Some are simple swivel heads operated by knobs or levers, and the one on the left is a gimbal mount that allows for easy, fast, and wide pans, shifts, and tilts when we use a long lens in wildlife and sports photography. There are many different types of tripods with different features. 
Typically, you look for the ultimate expendable length, and the more the number of legs, the smaller the tripod will collapse to. However, with more legs, it takes longer to extend and collapse. Then you want to determine if it has a center column for additional height if needed, and does it have a hook to allow you to stabilize it by hanging extra weight from it? And can you splay out the legs for support when shooting from low angles? Next, what's your tripod made from? Carbon fiber is lighter, sturdy, and able to dampen vibrations, while the aluminum is heavier, but much less expensive. For travel photography, you'll want to find a small, compact, and lightweight tripod that will still adequately support your gear. Tabletops or Gorilla Pods are great for small cameras supported from unique positions. And Monopods are a faster, less obtrusive option for awkward places. So, how do we use a tripod? First, stop being lazy and just use it. You can spread up the legs so the tripod is stable. They can be moved in all kinds of different configurations, heights and positions to make sure the camera is properly stabilized and won't tip over. Most tripods or heads will have a leveling bubble that you can use to make sure your tripod is set up correctly and properly balanced. I will almost always attach my camera bag to the hook under the center post to add weight and further stabilize the tripod and camera. So in review, use a tripod for better pictures. Use the right tripod for the situation. And the most important part of using a tripod is to use the tripod and stop being lazy. I hope this tip about using tripods has been helpful. Enjoy yourselves, stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you next time.